Hey there, how's it going? A few days ago, I released a video showing my process of creating a character. You don't have to have seen that video for this one to make sense, but if you want to see how this little alien came to life, there's a card up top. I mentioned in that video that I don't get my squishy character feel from the animations. That would take way too long for me to animate, and I'm a team of one. So I came up with this effect that I've really liked and I wanted to share. Here you can see the difference. This is the character moving and jumping without any squash functions active. And here it is again with the squash function on. Personally, I like it, and a lot of others seem to as well, so here's how you do it. By the way, I've only done this in Construct, but the logic isn't anything crazy, so I think it should work in other engines. If you do try this in another engine and it works, please let me know. First things first, you need to make sure that your player collisions are separate from your player art. This orange box has my platform movement behavior, as well as acts as the collision box for the actual player. The player art sprite over here houses all of the animations, has the pin behavior, and also has two very important instance variables, start underscore w and start underscore h. With those two in, we can move over to the event sheet. First thing you want to do is make sure that when the player art is created, it sets its position to the player collision box and then pins itself to the player collision box. Then we set the instance variable of start h to self dot height and the instance variable of start underscore w to self dot width. This now stores the base dimension of the player art, no matter what size it is. With that in place, we can set up the squash function. The function itself is fairly simple. We have a function called squash, and it passes in four parameters. Mod underscore H, mod underscore W, dir for duration, and all three of these are numbers, as well as a final boolean called hold. The hold is set up for situations where the player is falling, and it makes them squish in for the entire duration of the fall. So the way the function works is, when it's called, it first checks to see if hold is true. If it is true, then it needs to check to see whether the player art is mirrored or not. As a quick aside, when a sprite is mirrored inside of Construct, it actually flips its width into a negative. So if you keep an eye on the width, when I turn around, it goes into the negative. When I turn back, it goes positive. So we need to make sure to account for that when running this function. If the player art is not mirrored, indicated by the else, then we set the player's width to self.start underscore w plus mod underscore w. And then we do the same for height. And because hold is true, that's all we have to do. If it's mirrored, we need to do something slightly different. We do negative self.start underscore w minus mod underscore w for the width. You don't need to worry about the height, that can stay the same. Then if hold is not true, we have an else statement here, and you can just copy this stuff down. So we're gonna do the exact same thing if it's mirrored and if it's not mirrored. The only difference is now we wait dir seconds. Dir is just the variable we pass through up here. Then we set the player back to its original self.start underscore w and underscore h. Again, adding the negative for mirroring. And that's the entire function. If I collapse this down, we can look at how the calls work. For instance, when we jump, we call the squash function, and we set the mod height to negative 10, which means it will become 10 pixels shorter, and we set the mod w to 10, which means the player will be 10 pixels wider. The duration is 0.1. I find 0.1 or 0.2 to be about the sweet spot for myself. It gives it that nice snappy quick rubber feel. We also make sure that hold is false, that way the player goes back to its original shape at the end. For the fall, I make the player 5 pixels taller and 5 pixels shorter. You don't need to worry about the dir here, this is just left over from copying it, this could be zero, because if you have hold checked, the dir does not matter. And for fall, you see here, we have hold checked. That means the player will stay to the new size until they land on the ground, in which case we get player on landed, and here we call it again to squash the player even more, and then set it back because hold is not set. So at the end, it will be set back to its original size. And that's pretty much all of it. It's a fun little trick that I've been using for a while now, and I really like the results it's been giving me. I hope this is helpful to some of you, and good luck on your projects. Thank you all very much for watching. I'd like to give an extra special thank you to my patrons, especially Abishan, Adam Edwards, David Scott, MLK, Ragnabro, Scott Hansen, and Soapy Gnome. You're all awesome people, and I truly appreciate the support. If you'd like to play any of my games, you can visit vimlark.itch.io. To get in contact with me, you can stop by my Twitch streams where I'm always doing something related to game dev or pixel art. Message me on Twitter, or join the Discord with a lot of other really cool people. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. And I will talk with you next time. Have a good one. Later.